who's there? Hey, Sally May. Hi. I was just about to put the kettle on. Oh, I can do it. Why would you do that? Look, I need a minute. You might want to sit down. And I'm fine standing up. If you've got something to tell me, spit it out. I've just seen Jeff. He had your necklace. He's found it. You know, we don't think it was ever lost. I think Jeff staged the burglary. Don't be absurd. You remember how on edge he was. He never wanted those lads in the house in the first place. You could tell. I'm not sure that's true. But so what? Well, so what if he was trying to make a point to punish you? It would have been really easy for Jeff to have taken your things and my keys and all. Proper little Poirot, aren't you? Look, we're all shaken up by what's happened. No one's thinking straight. Apologize, darling. Yeah, I'll apologize once Ryan's checked his pockets. Natalia, please. No, 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 no. Knock yourself out. Yeah, Come on. I don't know if No, I'm... no, do it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, d I don't know what's gotten into them. A. So how do you explain that? Well, your glamorous assistant isn't done yet. Check my wallet. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of paper inside. What does it say? It's a receipt for the necklace. I knew how much I loved it, so I bought you a replacement. More fool me, eh? Please wait, Chef. What for? Her to accuse me of the great train robbery. I mean, where's Sarah? I've got a date. Oh, don't we know about it? What? Donald Trump met Kim Jong-un with less publicity. <laughs> what time's a plane flying over with a banner? If it's worth having, he'll wait for you. Mm, that's if he shows up at all after this idiot's meddling. Oh, I was having a laugh. It did sound funny. But you've told everyone. Oh, he slipped out. I wonder what this meeting's about, anyway. We can rule out more money. Last time I'd arise at this place, it was an extra shilling. Oh, right, thank you for popping back in. Is this going to take long? I've got somewhere to be. Right, I'll cut to the chase then. So, Carla is returning tomorrow. Well, if you're wanting volunteers to stick up bunting, forget it. For all we know, it was her that brought the roof down. Yes, well, that's the police's problem, not yours. It could have been anyone. Nick's just as much in the frame. Well, it's pointless speculating, right? What we do know for definite, Carla's returning. She is one of the co-owners, so she calls the shots. Mm. And she said she's coming back permanently? Well, I don't know what her plans are, but, yeah, she could, which might mean there's going to be changes. She's changed us from skilled machinists into packers. Isn't that enough for her? Mm. I was just enjoying a bit of stability for once. Yes, well, I don't think she's going to want too much trouble. Well, whether she wants it or not, wherever that woman goes, it's not far behind. Mark my flaming words. Uh, you may as well. Audrey's not here. Nobody is. What? <laughs> uh, how could they be so petty? Oh, I'm not really bothered about that. All I was bothered about was putting your side of things to him. Yeah, uh, it's your birthday. Then you always not going to be here. I mean, come on, they might not like me, but there's no reason to punish you, is there? Oh, well, as far as punishments go, at least I don't have to listen to your mum banging on about her ad skin, so it's hardly the electric well, chair, is it? Don't excuses. You know, I've reached out and they're just throwing it back in my face. Yeah, well, maybe it's going to take a bit of time. Yeah, but I don't have time. The trial of issue is coming up, isn't it? Yeah. I need them on side. I know that, but it was a long shot anyway. Maybe it's just going to take a bit longer. Yeah, but obviously, obviously. Right, right, the gloves are off. Hey, where are you going? No, I'm tired of walking around late, Charles. I didn't tell them exactly what I think. No, Nick, don't, you cat, Nick! Have you really got no stout? What do you think I am, Newton and Ridley? Anyway, I don't drink stout. Would you never cater for the needs of your guests? This is not the ambassador's reception, you know. If you're after a pyramid of chocolates, you'll have a long wait. I don't know how you can drink that dishwater. <laughs> if you don't like my own brew, you can bog off to the Rovers. I'm running to the lynch mob again, no fear. Talk about a kangaroo court. That granddaughter of hers should be called Skippy. Well, anybody can get the wrong end of the stick. Yasmin practically had the black cap on. Well, I thought Alia was the one that was pushing it. Well, she didn't have to push very hard. Yasmin stood back and let me be searched like a common criminal. Why didn't you explain? I didn't have the chance. That lad's hands were in my pockets faster than the artful dodgers. Well, it's nothing that can't be smoothed over, is it? It's easy for you to see. After all I've done for that woman. It's just like me and your mother all over again. Hey, we don't talk about her, do we? Mm, suits me. I'll have a word with Yasmin if you want. No, you will not. 
If there's any peace to be made, she'll have to make the first move. I shan't be offering any olive branches. Well, you'll be half bush round here. Mind you, you might get a jar down at Devs, I suppose. I'm glad you find my predicament so funny. I'm heartbroken here. Maybe that's her. So it is. Well, she can stew in her own juice. I'll speak to her when I'm good and ready, not before. What are you doing? Right, where are Mum and Gran? Have you said something to them? I'm not even allowed to be in the same room as my Gran. Are you all right, mate? You lost the plot? Don't push it. What do you want, Nick? I want to know what you've said, OK? Mum and Gran were meant to be at Leanne's birthday. Nick, I've already told you it's no big deal. No, no, but it is to me. He's caused me to lose enough without me losing my family. <laughs> you don't need any help from me, mate. You're a snake. You, you, you know what? You can think what you like of me. But Leanne deserves better. Really? But I get out now, Leanne, where you still... Hey, enough! What? What? Enough! What? Enough! Enough! Stop it! Stop it! Now. What are you doing? You see? You see him for what he really is now, Mum. You'll be next. He's already hit you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, Stop it! What? it. What are you even doing? Yeah, all I'm gonna ask you. Okay, you and Grandma were meant to be at Leanne's birthday. She's done nothing wrong. I know that. So what? Why didn't you turn up? Not even a phone call. I was at the medical centre with your Gran. What? Is she all right? Yes. No thanks to you. She's had an angina attack. Well, where is she now? She's gone home. The doctor gave her the old clear and she she got a taxi. I should think she's having a lie down and, frankly, I couldn't blame her. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, where's Liam? Oh, he's going around to Josie's for his tea. Hopefully there won't be any more mud on the menu. You are? Mm, nothing. It's long story. Hey, I've just bumped into Audrey. Gail was taking us to the medical centre. Is she all right? I don't know. I think she's had a funny turn. No, you said she was feeling rough before, but I just thought it was a hangover. It probably is. You can't come out when you're older. Whereas we... <laughs> uh, what's that in aid of? Romance. Well, Emma, I think you're very sweet, but I'm not that kind of girl. Oh, neither am I. <laughs> We're going manhunting. Watch out, Mr Wright. Here you come. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, come on, you've not been happy with your social life for ages. Well, yeah, considering my last big night was here with Gail and a foot spa, do you blame me? Mm. Oh, that water was like leek and potato soup. Mm. Oh, cheers. I'll never be able to eat that again. <laughs> now, let's find your perfect guy. Oh, I don't see him around here. Oh, that's because you're not looking in the right place. Luke Baz not with you? No, he don't get out much anymore. He's waiting on a mobility scooter to come through. Well, I would have thought he could have had somebody's away. Got some standards. He's ordered a novelty one, styled like a Model T. He'd be riding around like Laurel and Hardy. I shouldn't throw that to him. No, well, perhaps not. Right. Back to business. What are you looking for? 500. Four fifty. Deal. No haggling. Just want it gone. Suits me. You got to be really discreet about where you got this lot from. Whatever you say. Who's this? Friend of yours? Uh, no, not really. But uh, well, I'll take it out anyway. Love me for a start. Come on, ideal man, please. Well, tall, nice hair, mm. ripped. Yeah, yeah, he's got to look good in a suit. Mm. David Gandhi, basically. And not a bad boy either. You know, I want him to be able to set a good example to Liam. Wise would be good. Someone who knows what's important in life. So, David Gandhi meets Gandhi. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Although, I doubt he's on here. You never know. But if you're going to get him, you need to sell yourself. You should have left the profile I'd done for you. 
Emma, I'm a hairdresser, not a beauty consultant. This is a flat in Weatherfield, not a penthouse in Manchester, and I am not 22. You could pass for it. Yeah, well, I don't want to pass for anything. I want them to know exactly what they're getting. <laughs> well, don't count on everyone else being that honest. Mm. Well, that's everyone else, not me. Right, done. Ooh, let's have a look, Ben. Straight in with the single mum. That's David Gandhi swiping the wrong way. Not necessarily. Anyway, if he is that type of bloke, then I'm not interested. Oh, lucky in love. You don't want to sound like a jinx. I'm not a jinx. Gail, there's a jinx. Her husbands have got their own vault in Southern Cemetery. Oh. What? What now? Your interests. Keep fit, fashion, television, cookery. All right, yeah. Maybe I'm pushing it a bit with the, the keep fit and the cookery, but I needed something else other than clothes and telly. Agreed, but that's all a bit old hat. Not very now. You need to bring it into the 21st century. Sex it up a bit, like. You need more wine. <coughs> Back in the sink. Seriously, good. Well, wouldn't you be having grafted your watsits off just for Lady Muck to swan back in? Do you really reckon she's going to come back to work? Well, they say the villain always goes back to the scene of the crime. Well, technically, it'll be the community centre. Same difference. Hey, have you heard what Carla's planning? All I know is that she's coming back. And what do you think to that? I think she's suffered enough. Very generous in the circumstances. There are no circumstances, and until the police say otherwise, anything else is just malicious gossip. I don't want to hear it. Got it? I was hoping I'd find you here. I'll come round in a bit. Here are the keys I had cut. I won't be needing them. I don't want your keys. I think I'll treat myself to some postgraduates. What is it you're after, then? Forgiveness. <laughs> I don't keep that on my key ring. I don't want you to move out. Look, I realise you were confused and still shook up after the burglary. I shouldn't have been so hard on you. You had every right. We can put that behind us. We can. But what about Alia? I can't stay in her house knowing how she feels about me. She's genuinely sorry. Mm. And I told her straight, you're the best thing that's happened to me in a very long time. My home is your home. You are family now. You said that? Yes. But after what happened with Sharif, it's been very hard to trust again. Let someone in. I trust you, Jeff. It'd break my heart if you left me. In that case, then. I best stay put, Anna. How could I have got it so wrong? It was an easy mistake. Yeah, if you were looking to blame someone else, it was. I virtually accused him of terrorising my gran. You're being way too hard on yourself. JD and Jamie played a blinder when we spoke to him. They wouldn't have fooled anyone. They certainly fooled me. And they fooled the police. Well, perhaps I wanted to be fooled. Yeah, maybe Jeff's right. Deep down, I do resent him being there. Wouldn't be the weirdest thing. And is your family home? No, it isn't. After my dad died and my granddad and then Z moved away, it hasn't been the same. My grand needs to get on with her life. I don't want to get in the way of that. Yeah, I know how you feel. I remember when I was around when Mum was living with Steve and now Robert. I feel like a third wheel. Especially when you walk in at the wrong moment. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> that hasn't happened and I'd sooner not think about that, if I'm honest. <laughs> I should go and face the music. You need to come with you. Nah. I'm sure there'll be plenty of humble pie to go around, but 
This is something I need to do by myself. All right. Uh, I don't know, maybe I should ring Gran, you know, make sure she's all right. Oh, yeah, smart move. Break the terms of your bail conditions twice in one day and bring on Audrey's angina. OK, I just feel I should be doing something. Oh, I think you've done more than enough today. You've already alienated your mother just when we need her on side. But that wasn't my fault. Oh, not your fault. Well, whose fault was it then? Because to tell you something, that wasn't you just now. Well, maybe I should do it more often, you know? Might do me good. People might treat me with some respect. Uh, you were out of control, Nick. I don't even know who that was. Come on, just, just talk to me, please. I can't help you otherwise. No, <laughs> no one can help me. You know, uh, just sometimes, sometimes the pressure just builds up. And it goes round and round, and it just gets too much, and it's just all in here. Right. So how long have you felt like this since you took the money? No, I was a... Just a bad decision, a whole long line of bad decisions it was since the accident. <sighs> I say accident. It wasn't really an accident, was it? Because David tried to kill me? I think people forget that. He tried to kill me and I get brain damage. Go figure. So are you saying that the brain injury is to blame for all this? Oh, you, uh, you think it's an excuse? No, I, d I didn't say that. <laughs> you didn't have to. You know, um, people see me and think I'm all right, you know. Good old Nick, you know, laughing and joking in the pub, but, um... Sometimes I can't. I mean, I lashed out at you, didn't I? Yeah, well, you've come a long way since then, haven't you? Yeah. I'll just learn to handle it better. You know, when I feel myself getting angry, I just, I just step away. But I still lose my rag. I shout, lose control, and that. Uh, I don't want to. God knows I don't want to. That's that then, that's the last day in the big chair. Well, you can come and sit in my big chair anytime you want. Hmm, <laughs> you're being rude. I'm trying to be, but as a double <laughs> entendre, it doesn't really bear much scrutiny. <sighs> you know, you're very protective of him, aren't you, for an ex? And you are very jealous. I don't know whether to be flattered or scared. You just, you seem very concerned about him, that's all. I, I want him to be happy, yeah. Oh, I hope he meets the man of his dreams tonight, I really do. Really? Really. Sean is my past. You are my here and now, and I very much hope that you will be my future. What a world. You could keep your door unlocked when I'm a growing up. Those days are long gone, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't blame you, Aurelia. Uh, the only mistakes you made was being too trusting. <laughs> yes, well, that's thy nature. Mm. She always looks for the good in people. Ordinarily. Yeah. Well, as you say, we all had a shock. She wasn't thinking clearly. Mind you, the main thing is, once bitten, twice shy. No mm. more strangers in here. You're back. If that's all right. Yeah, of course. I'm relieved. <laughs> Me too. No hard feelings? No, no. Uh, there's some food on the side there. We were just chatting about the burglary. Yes. Um, I hope you don't mind, darling, but we think it best if you don't bring people back here. People you don't really know. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> well, I know your generation likes to party, but I I'm just thinking about your gran. No, I understand. Good. Well, I hate bringing it up. I don't want you to think this isn't your home or that we're treating you like a kid. It's about security. When you've flown the nest, you can bring back home who you like. Hmm? I'm sure it won't be long. Yeah, maybe it is time that I got my own flat. Oh, uh, no, 
please, let's let's not rush into this. I mean, I, that wasn't that's not what this was about. No, I know it wasn't, Graham, but you know, I need to make the break at some point, and now feels right. Good for you, love. Well, a girl like you, bright, independent, black's a good time. I mean, you don't want to be treading on eggshells around a pair of old codgers like us any more than we want all night raves in our front room. No, I think this might be the best thing for all concerned. Yeah, fingers crossed. I'll start looking for a place tomorrow. I'm sorry. No, don't be. You couldn't possibly know how this feels. And, uh, I wouldn't want you to. Yeah, well, people should make allowances. Gail, Audrey. Mm, it's too late. After tonight, I think I'm a head case, you know? I blew it. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure. What are you saying? Well, your brain injury meant that you behaved totally out of character. You said yourself, you were out of control. Right, and that's a good thing. Well, maybe not at a birthday party, but in court. Court? <laughs> I can see the look on the judge's face. Yeah, and so can I. They'll be thinking, who in their right mind would steal money off the gran? Well, not you, because you weren't. You were vulnerable. And David exploited that. Oscar winner Judy Dench embarks on a trip of a lifetime to meet her favourite animal, the orangutan, in the rainforests of Borneo. That's new tomorrow at 9. Next tonight on ITV2, the new villa Casa Amor and the host of New Girls and Guys means heads are turning everywhere in Love Island. Here on ITV, singer Katie Tunstall searches for her long-lost family. (laughs) 